Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. Home of the Texas Rangers, Globe Life Park in Arlington. Game two of the series, the Padres and the Rangers. One of the best hitters in baseball, the Texas All-Star, Prince Fielder, a home run, a couple of RBIs last night in the 4-3 Texas victory as he gets ready for the Padres tonight. Welcome you on a hot summer's night. Arlington, Texas between Dallas and Fort Worth, it's the Padres and the Texas Rangers. Good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant, Dick Enberg. Please, you've joined us on a Saturday night. Keep cool back there in San Diego. Well, when the Padres signed James Shields, big game Shields, he doesn't want to be called that anymore, but they signed him so that as a pitcher at the top of the rotation, he would give them big games in games that are important. And this is one. We're two games away from the All-Star break. Padres have lost six in a row. They need a big game from James Shields tonight. And this is a guy who started Game 7 of the World Series last year trying to avoid the seven-game losing streak. But he's been on key the last two times out for James Shields. When you look at the numbers, last two starts, don't worry about the record, but the ERA, 1.3, opponents only 130. That's over 13 and two-thirds innings pitch. It's against Seattle and Pittsburgh, where he had fewer hits than innings pitch. He's got to minimize the walks. He's had as many as four walks. He's had games maybe one or less than one walk. And if he is working on the the, uh, the corners this evening, but keeping the ball in the ballpark because they've got some threats in that lineup, I think James Shields do okay and avoid that seven-game losing streak. Here's the good news. He's familiar with the ballpark here in Arlington and against the Rangers' lifetime. He has a seven and three records. So we're set to go. Two games before the All-Star break. Shields against the Texas firepower of Fields and Beltre and company. The Padres need a big game indeed tonight.
brought to you by Five Hour Energy Shots. Have you tried great tasting Five Hour Energy lately? By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by Mercury Insurance. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com today and see how much you could save. 91 degrees at game time. Temperature will drop into the lower 80s at game's end. A breeze, much like last night, out of the south, which means it's blowing in from right field and toward the left field corner. A look at the Padres lineup, brought to you by Toyota, with Melvin Upton leading off home run last night. Solarte in the second slot, then Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, Yonder Alonso. Three, four, five spots. Derek Norris drops down to the sixth hole. Then Jed Jerko, Will Venable, and Will Middlebrooks. And the scouting report for the Rangers, right-hander Colby Lewis is brought to you by Tough Shed. Into his ninth year in the big leagues. Not a hard thrower. He's a strike thrower, though. Very few walks. I think the Padre hitters are going to get some fastballs, straight fastballs, not overpowering fastballs tonight from Colby Lewis. 35-year-old native of Bakersfield, California, is Colby Luton. Lewis, a big guy at 6'4", 245. Good record. He leads the Rangers with eight wins, only four losses. And here's the Rangers' defense behind him, brought to you by Renovation Realty. Hamilton, DeShields, Chu in the outfield. Around the horn, Beltre, Andrus, Odor, and Moreland at first, with Chirinos, Chirinos behind the plate. Well... The Rangers broke their five-game losing streak last night. The Padres need to snap this six-game losing streak. Melvin Upton leads it off and delivered three of the Padres' eight hits last night. One, a long shot to left field. Very bad in the left field bleachers for his second home run of the season. He's long and lean, but when he connects, he can drive the ball. Absolutely. It looks like, you know, you look at his brother Justin up, his short, compact swing, but when Melvin gets extended, longer arms, he can send it a long way as well. So from the number nine spot to the leadoff spot tonight. Ready, Justin, hitting fourth. Up in his last 11 games against the Rangers, hitting 442 with five home runs. Just a handful of at-bats, so his average big to jump 30 points with a three-hit night tonight. So we're set to go. Nice crowd on hand on this Saturday night in Arlington, Texas. Lewis delivers. We're underway and swinging at the first ball and gloved by Beltre. And one pitch, one out. Jan Salarte steps up. Well, the defense for the Rangers is going to have to be on their toes because, as I mentioned, very few walks from Lewis. He will pound the strike zone with that fastball. So a lot of balls being put in play against the Texas right-hander. Solarte's average at 247. The combined average on this road trip of the starting lineup tonight tells you why the Padres is scuffling a bit. 236 for the nine men in the batting order. The DH tonight is Matt Kemp. So they just need more base hits. They're close. There's a base hit to left center field, and that's going to go up the alley far enough for Solarte to make it to second base. The Shields gets it in, and Solarte in scoring position. Get that first run. Deny the Rangers the early lead. They feed off that. They're 35 and 11 when they score first. And what do you know? It is a fastball down, trying to hit the corners, Colby Lewis, and Solarte knows that he's not going to be overpowered. So just take a nice easy swing takes it the opposite way splits that gap it would be nice for San Diego to get on the board first Texas did it last night and up winning Matt Kemp 7 for 28 on the road trip his average at 244 just one RB two RBIs now behind the leader Justin Upton fastball inside that's the one thing about Colby Lewis these hitters cannot cannot overswing against the 87 88 mile an hour fastball. He will throw in with the fastball as well. Ball to the screen Upton. Brother Solarte jogs over to third base. Looks like a cut fastball or a slider from Lewis. Let's take a look out of the hand. 
Oh, short breaking ball. They did appeal on that swing, and first base umpire Jim Reynolds said no, he did not go. So uh, the Padres may have caught a break on that. Ruled a pass ball. So now the Padres can score on an out. 2 0 the count. Ground ball to third, not on that out. Safe at third, throws it away at first. Safe is Kemp. You see how they score that as Beltre went for the tag and almost able to flag it on Solarte before he got back to the bag. This is close. Yeah, Beltre is motioning towards the Ranger dugout. Jeff Bannister is on the top step. Whether they're going to challenge this or not, I don't know. Have to wait and see. And it looks like they're going to go to the headphones. Ah, nothing like a first inning challenge. Well, you know, this could work for the Padres because if he's safe at, if he's safe at third base, no more challenges for the That's Texas true. Rangers. That's true. I thought he was safe. What did you think? I thought he was as well. When you saw the start of the play when Beltre gloved the ball, Solarte was so far up the line you thought, hmm, he'll never make it. But he made a quick slide back. We'll check it out on the challenge as well as New York makes its call. So he's coming, leaning toward the play. Whoa, got to get back. And Beltre thought he had him, but he doesn't tag him till Solarte has his right foot on the back. Right there. That's a pretty easy one for New York, I would think. Meanwhile, if the call stands, then Kemp's at first. Solarte at third with one out. Well, the uh, crew chief is Field and Culbreth. He's the gentleman, the umpire on the left. The calling umpire on the right is Manny Gonzalez. They are on the headphones to New York. Now, there's some places that are so close you can understand why it takes two, three minutes, but unless there's a more condemning angle. This one's very close. Got your bags packed? I don't. You don't. You no, that's a night. Him. That's a night before thing. Oh, okay. yeah. After the game tonight. All right. Here's another angle. Oh, Ooh, that one looks the other way, doesn't it? Angles do deceive. Yeah. And you know, we've, we've mentioned this before. The longer that the umpires are on the headsets, it seems to sway towards the original call because they can't quite get the definitive angle to make the call or to overturn the call, I should say. Regardless, Kemp is safe on a fielder's choice. Either will be two outs, Kemp at first, or one out, runners at the corners for the Padres. Not many things have gone right for San Diego, as you can imagine if you've been following us on this road trip. A six game losing streak and a lot of close yeah. calls. I mean, this one's really going to hurt Dick. If he gets ruled out third, that's really going to hurt. You're trying to get off to a good start. Build a little winning streak before the All Star break. Leave a good taste in your mouth during the hiatus, and then come back and go get them. Well, maybe they sent this one to India. Go beside there. Please hold. The next representative will be with you shortly. <laughs> Wonder what kind of music they're playing. In their headsets. Okay, they've got two angles and they're synced up. So you're seeing this in real time just from two different angles. Try to split your vision. There it looks left looks like he's safe. Right, maybe not. How can they be so different? Well, I'm glad I'm not on the other end of this one. We may have caught them at a coffee break though. Get in from Starbucks and Oh, we got what? So the call in the field, safe at third base, still waiting to hear from New York. And as I mentioned, as time goes on, it sways towards the original call. 
Yeah, if they, if they can't make a decision in two minutes, the call should stand. I know they want to get everything exactly right, and obviously, even from angles, it's tough to get it right. One angle looks one way, one looks the other, and how do they come up with safe? You're right, Mr. Grant. Poof. <laughs> kind of wiped the brow on that one. <laughs> Is the game over yet? Uh, hopefully, as we look at the challenges remaining now, San Diego. No more challenges for the Rangers. Four minutes and 16 seconds of delay to come up with the decision. You had it right in the first five seconds. You know, they <laughs> had to call you. <laughs> okay, first and third. Let's go, Padres. See what you can do with this early advantage, Justin Upton. At 256, the club's top home run hitter and RBI producer. Infield back, they'll concede the run for a chance at turning a double play. Colby Lewis pretty much iced. Mm -hmm. Although on a 91 degree night, I'm sure he's more than accustomed to these conditions and ready to fire. One to know to Upton. Outside, 2 and 0. DeAndre Alonso on deck. Colby Lewis had trouble keeping men off base, and many of them have scored of late. The home ERA over five. 2 0 pitch. Yeah, 87. He will peck away. It, it, Colby Lewis is unbelievable. He throws 87 88 as Yonder Alonso waits on deck. He will peck away that outside corner fastball slider, but yet he will still challenge a hitter with an 87 mile an hour two seamer on the inside part of the plate. So the 2 1 pitch, a look over at first and just back in time. Kemp is leaning. Yeah, no more challenges, so hang with him. Take a look. Oh, he was going. Go to the outside part of the bag. Oh. Sorry, no more challenges. Uh oh. He might have gotten a break there. Fastball away. High pop up. Back of second. Shortstop Anvis. And there's two up. So this is what's been happening throughout the trip. There are moments to get a run and down the lineup. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Somebody's got to come up with a blue pit or a line drive. And not just an out. So now the infield can settle normal position as Yonder Alonso comes up. Two outs, first and third. And Kemp uh, seemed to be flirting with a possible steal of second. We'll see if that's in the makes. Although here holding on the runner Kemp, that does open up the right side for Alonso. Okay. Yonder with 20 runs batted in his average down to 293. He's four for 24 on this road trip. Now Odor moves way over into the hole to take that hole away. Well, let's take a look at uh, Phantom Cam and Upton. Watch the barrel of the bat just working underneath that baseball a little bit out in front. And just that little bit makes the difference between splitting the gap in right center field and popping up to the right side. Off speed at 75 for a strike. Big curveball. Matt's 8 out of 10 in the stolen base department. Salardi at third. Kemp edges off first. High and away. A little quick pitch right there from Colby Lewis. Slide step. Here's a little nugget also on. Colby Lewis as Derek Norris awaits on deck. Rather than walking a hitter, if he's got a three ball count, he will challenge a guy with a fa he'd rather throw a fastball right down the middle than try to nitpick and walk a guy. That ball hit to right field, shallow. Here comes a quartet, but it's a shortstop going out for it, making the catch. A couple of pop flies. And the Padres lead runners at first and third. No score. Here come the Rangers.
lined up, brought to you by Hyundai. The line of the Shields leads it off. Great speed, then Shin Su Chu, Prince Fielder on his way to the All Star game. He's the one representative from the Rangers. Veteran Adrian Beltre, Josh Hamilton hits fifth, Mitch Moreland sixth. That three, four, five, six hitters, they all have power. And then Elvis Andrus, Rugnet Odor, and Robinson Chirinos. And the scouting report for right hander James Shields making his 19th start. Hey, stop or stuff. Got to stop here at six game losing streak. No seven game losing streak and some uh, avoid some deep counts also. It's hot out there. Hopefully James can go deep and have some quick innings. So no deep counts. I'm going to mark that down. Delano De Shields stole a run first inning last night. Rangers scored without the aid of a base hit. Takes a strike from Shields. Dad a big leaguer as well, same name. One and one. Shields making his 19th start. As we mentioned, a five week drought for him after that 7 0 start. Pitched really well the last two times out. Nothing to show for it except a loss. And he's number three in the league in strikeouts with 126 in just 111 innings. Two and two. The Rangers have had trouble winning at home. They had lost eight in a row until last night. They're 16 and 24 on the season. Swing and a miss. Tied him up inside. And a check of the San Diego Padres defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. The two Uptons left and center with Venable and right. Solarte at third. We're featuring Middlebrooks because he starts at shortstop tonight. Jerko and Alonzo on the right side with Norris behind the plate for James Shields. Shin Su Chu. He's been struggling of late. He goes around. Strike one. Last 81 at bats, hitting only 173. His average dipping to 227. He'll tag one now and then. 11 home runs. And against Shields, has had some success. Six for 16. I really think you can get in on Chu, jam him. A lot of left handed hitters. When you're a right handed pitcher, you have the stuff of James Shields. You can bury it towards the back foot. And he made a great pitch to Delano De Shields. That was a change up swung out of this down and in. So hopefully he gets that feel early of all of his pitches tonight. Two and one. That's a big pitch for James Shields because that was ball three and that changed the whole at bat. Rather than three one, now two two. Chu went after a bad pitch. To the delight of that fan and his son. <laughs> Strike three called and two knew it. So a couple of punch outs to start for James Shields. So add to his strikeout total. And a look now to the keys to this game tonight. Brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, like any big league team, you have to eliminate the mental mistakes. Not only errors, physical mistakes, but mental mistakes. Minimize those and also support for Shields. You know, during the course of the season for James Shields, he's been getting a lot of support. So, hey, for this second game of the series, give him some breathing room. Give him some wiggle room to work with. Prince Fielder. Boy, the numbers are... Glossy for him, 345 average, 14 homers, 53 runs batted in. And what's amazing about this power hitting fielder, he has struck out only 39 mm -hmm. times all year. Bounces this one up the middle. And Solarte playing in that spot makes the play. One, two, three, the story on 12 pitches from Shields.
mental lapses can't happen. Um, but but this this type of um, uh, stuff, you know, is stuff that is an outgrowth of, you know, what's been building up. You know what I mean? Like it, you're you're right. They got to decide themselves. You know, like hey, you know what? I got to play. The, I got to play a certain way, or I'm not going to play. You know, um, and mental lapses included. Manager Pat Murphy and every manager or coach in this game at all levels will echo the same uh, message and that is you know physical errors happen in the mm -hmm. game to everyone but a mental error is under your control right. and mental errors are inexcusable and they'll get you a seat in the, on the bench in a hurry. Derek Norris swings at the first pitch and lines that one to left field that's deep to the wall and the catch made by Hamilton. Now here's the play last night. The shift was on and a short, shallow fly ball behind shortstop. But Middlebrooks is the only man on that side and he holds the ball. Everyone thought, well, he must have thought that was the third out. The shield just kept right on running after he tagged up. Now Upton should have called off Middlebrooks to make the catch and he's moving forward. Would have been an easy play. Good point. So there were a couple of mental problems on that play. And it cost the Padres a run. And as I mentioned earlier, the Rangers, when they score first, they really relish the game action 35 and 11. Jed Jerko, 227. He's had the best road trip of any Padre in the starting lineup, nine for 29 with a home run. Two and now swing and a miss. He's gone. First strikeout for Lewis. 88 mile an hour fastball right down the middle. Fastball, curveball, fastball. Oh, in that first inning, both Kemp, or rather Upton and Alonzo, had pitches just in the heart of the plate and popped them up to short. He's going to throw it right down the middle. I mean, his intent is to hit the corners, but as I mentioned earlier. He's going to challenge these hitters rather than nitpick on the outside or inside. And if that ball leaks across the heart of the plate, you're going to get a fat pitch to hit. Line foul down the right field side. Well down into the corner. Venable falls behind two strikes. Will four for 16 on the road trip. Shook off the fastball curveball going with the slider here. And he strikes out Venable. Back to back strikeout. Sturko and Venable go down swinging. One, two, three inning for Lewis and the Rangers.
Couple injury updates to give you Brandon Morrow through a simulated game today. If all goes well and he feels well afterwards, he will head out on a rehab assignment. Tim Fedorovich caught his simulated game, so after having the knee surgery during spring training, he is already heading out on a rehab stint, headed to uh, Fort Wayne today. One of the note, Corey Spangerberg, who has a bone bruise. I asked Pat Murphy about him. He said he had to shut down any baseball activity. They tried for a little bit, but they said the bone bruise, that can be fickle. Sometimes it could qu heal quickly. Sometimes it could take a while. So this one, they have no timetable right now on Spangenberg. All right, thank you for that update, Chris. Adrian Beltre, cleanup hitter, leads off here in the second. No score. Going to the count last night, he sent a laser to left field right down the line, and he measured it about 10 feet inside, or maybe 15 feet inside the foul pole, and into the first row for his seventh home run, and that ended a 21-game drought without a home run for this power guy. Yeah, a couple of badly uh, located fastballs out of the hand of Ian Kennedy resulted in home runs last night. The ball rolled foul wide a third. Beltre, Hamilton, and Moreland in the second inning for Texas. The Rangers, despite a home game slump, are two games under 500, but only five and a half back of Houston in the National League or American League Central. Angels are only a half game out of first down. That race is very tight. Struck him out. Three strikeouts out of the first four hitters for Shields. He got Beltre on that changeup. Another great changeup. Remember when I mentioned in our open about James Shields staying on top of the baseball? He does just that on the changeup down and in. Beltre trying to catch up. Look at his swing is almost complete, and then the ball enters the hitting area. That's a good arm action by James Shields. Josh Hamilton, the left fielder. Back in action. Back from the Angels to Texas. Got a couple of home runs. Had a single and four backs last night. 12 for 45 since his return. Two balls and a strike. Well, tomorrow the road trip comes to an end. 11:30 our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego. Tyson Russ will go against Giovanni Gallardo. And that's in there. Two and two. James Shields may have gotten the benefit of a call there on that changeup. Josh Hamilton did not like the call. He's doing a fine job this at bat in and out in and out. And this is their full count. There's Tyson Ross. He and Shields on this trip pitching terrific games but no support. Oh, that's going to be a hot one tomorrow. Ground ball into the shift. Jerko out in shallow right. Flips it on to Alonzo for the second out. I love the ground ball to the rover on the shift. Hey, James Shields hit his spot. The ball was put in play on the ground, and Jed Jerko was right there. First baseman Mitch Moreland. He's tied with Fielder for the home run lead for the Rangers, 14. Very inviting right field area for that left handed pull hitter. It's only 377 in deep right center. 349 into the corner just off the foul pole. So straight away to right field, about 360 feet. That's a pretty easy shot. Plus the overhang, a la Tiger Stadium in right field. Chopper defers, foul. Well, James Shields needs to dispose of Mitch Moreland quickly, and there's that overhang, Dick. I love it. Just like Tiger Stadium. I just love the whole setup there. It's very cozy, very quaint. Even underneath, if you're underneath yeah. that overdrop there, the uh, overhang, it's a good seat in right field. Yeah. You're looking down on the right fielder, yeah. close to the action. Oh, the big curveball, and it didn't quite catch the letters. 
He had Moreland frozen. Padres had him frozen last night. 0 for 4 with a couple of punch outs. 5 for his last 33. Keep him quiet. Levels off at 2 and 2. We were talking about it last night. If you weren't with us here on Fox Sports San Diego, they borrowed the look of uh, Tiger Stadium, the second deck overhang, and then the Yankee Stadium with the facade in straightaway center field. Outside some of the arches, uh, we're mindful of the old Comiskey Park, Chicago. That ball hit very well to deep right center field by Moreland, and they have the lead, one nothing. Number 15 for Mitch Moreland. The first hit of the game for the Rangers, a home run. The 18th allowed by Shields this year. But it was a 2 2 changeup. Derek Norris wants it down. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about it all the time. It's just a matter of a few inches. Moreland gets extended on the changeup that's away on contact right at the belt buckle. You know, at first, I, I knew it was hit well, but I didn't really think it was going to travel all that far. But Melvin Upton Jr. running out of real estate for the home run. 405 feet, it's measured. Brings up Elvis Andrus. Good success against Shields, Andrus. He's 15 for 35. That comes out at 429. An ignominious mark for the two pitchers of uh, Shields and Kennedy giving up the home runs. Mm -hmm. Kennedy last night, two home runs, now has offered 20, and Shields 18. They're in the top five National League. Two and one. That's a strike at the knees. Over half of the home runs that James Shields has given up have been solo shots. That's the good news. Yeah. And a full count. That's a home run yard, so the Padres will have their chances. Rugnet Odor on deck. See where the final vote for the All Star that Kansas City St. Louis partnership, where all the Kansas City fans voted for their mm -hmm. own and the Cardinals, and the same for the Cardinals, Kansas City. That will be out of play. So Carlos Martinez, the Cardinals pitcher, goes to the All Star game, and Mike Mustukas, Stockus, Stockus goes uh, for Kansas City, and that's got it. You know, the Major League Baseball has to. Take a look at that. It's ludicrous. He goes around. Why don't we get Padres, Angels, Dodgers, and we'll all vote for each other next year? And we'll have no one but Southern California players. How about that for an idea? Corner of the market.
and some boots. Mm -hmm. One nothing Rangers as we go to the third. Will Middlebrooks hitting ninth in the order. Leads it off for San Diego and takes strike one. Melvin Upton then Jan Solarte to follow. Middlebrooks one for nine on the trip. Nine home runs early. If Padres would welcome back a big swing. Lewis gave up a double and camp safe on a fielder's choice. So Padres had first and third in the first, couldn't score. A couple of pop ups. And that ball hit high in the air to center field, and that is going to chase the Shields close to the track. One away. Top of the order, Melvin Upton. Bounce to third to lead off the game. Be interesting to see second time around against Colby Lewis with that 88 mile an hour fastball. How the approach of these hitters go about the second time around. He has shown a curveball, a little bit of a slider, but mostly fastballs. First ball swinging again. With all the trade acquisitions and trades in the offseason to acquire more offense. We all were excited in the off year about the new additions, which makes what's happening now all the more puzzling that the Padres in the last 10 games have scored a total of 16 runs. You know, we would have thought back in uh, January, blindfolded they'd score 16 runs in 10 games. I quite honestly thought that the opposition was going to be shaking in their boots a little bit more with the offense and the potential offense that strolls up to the plate each and every night. It's a team slump and Upton caught looking strike three. That's the third strikeout for Lewis who has now retired seven in a row. Hey tweet your strongest fan photo. You've heard the professor talk about this. Use hashtag SD data strong fan and you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. That's a lot of fun. Who doesn't like to be on TV? Well, you go to the ballpark and they show fans up on the yeah. big score and they they get all excited and shaking and smiling. Whoops. Solarde stepped up and walked right into that one. And uh, the Rangers are going to argue that he hit himself. He didn't uh, get hit by a pitch. He kind of walked right into that delivery. I'm sure not in intent. That didn't feel very good, but you don't see umpires call that play. We see it on this trip where. In the Pittsburgh game, the Pirates hitter looked as if he stuck his knee out and took a hit by pitch. Slider. Yeah. See the ball change direction there. That kind of hurts. Not a lot of meat down that area. So Solarte on for the second time. He doubled the first time to left center. We have two outs. Here's Matt Kemp. Safe on that unusual fielder's choice in the first inning. With Solarte at third, he hit the ball to the third baseman Beltre, and Solarte able to dive back. Very close play. It took well over four minutes for New York to decide the call would stand, and then camp safe on the fielder's choice. Back. Matt's dad is here in Dallas to cheer on his son. Impressive man. And see where Kemp gets his signs. Oh yeah, you could tell that when he was a kid, he was always the first kid picked, right? Mm -hmm. You're choosing sides in the backyard mm -hmm. or on the school yeah. ground. Any sport. Basketball was his big game. Yeah. University of Oklahoma wanted him in basketball. One and two. I think if you had to choose sides for checkers, I think Matt Kemp would be the first choice. Being such a good athlete. Hey, gunny sack races. He would probably be the first choice. Yeah, three legged races. Ooh, looking in. Two and two. 
What was your picnic specialty when it came to all those games that kids play? We just tossed the football around, tossed the baseball around. Mm -hmm. We got the gloves out. My uncle and I, my cousin, my dad, and played catch. Hit some fungos. Yeah. yeah. Make up a little diamond and play. The whole family play a game. Two and two. And inside again. So with the full count, Salarte off with the pitch. Well, we just came from St. Louis. I'm sure if you had a nice game of cornhole during a picnic, Matt Kemp would be the first choice with his accuracy, with his arm. Yeah, they're having the national cornhole championships now. Where's that at? I don't know where they're holding it. But I guess it's a big deal, huh? Knoxville, Tennessee. Nice. That oh. ball is hit very well to deep left center field. That chases Hamilton back. It is gone. Touch ball. Kick gives the Padres the lead. Number eight for Matt Kemp and San Diego takes the lead two to one. And a Padre fan out there to catch the souvenir. Hubba hubba. <laughs> And with that, Kemp ties Justin Upton for the RBI lead, 46 and 47 for him. Now, just as I mentioned, Colby Lewis, he would rather challenge a hitter with any one of his pitches out of his repertoire rather than kind of nitpick and walk Matt Kemp. Well, Matt Kemp gets a 3-2 pitch and crushes it. And how appropriate, as you mentioned, Dick, to a Padre fan. With Dad cheering him on, 384 feet. That home run. Long enough. Up, up then grounds to short. Andrus across for the out. But the two outs, the hit batsman Salarte and Kemp drives one into the left field seats and San Diego takes the lead. It's two to one. Homer, Padres lead 2 1. Let's go to our Arco top tier profile and James Shields. Eight starts against the Rangers, the last eight. He's 5 and 1. We'll look at that minuscule ERA, 1.18. He gave up the home run to Moreland in the second and faces Rugnet Odor, Robinson Chirinos, and Delano De Shields. Last of the third for the Rangers. Odor hitting 245. And he falls behind two strikes. Bottom of the order, 891, so hopefully a quick inning for James Shields. They sent him back to Triple A, and since he's returned, Odor has hit very well. 21 games hitting 370.
Yeah. Two and two. Nice ceremony before the game. They inducted two new members to the Texas Rangers Baseball Hall of Fame. Full count. Juan Gonzalez, the outfielder, and relief pitcher Jeff Russell inducted today. What a nice turnout of former Rangers and Ranger stars Rusty Greer, Tom Grieve, Toby Hera, Jim Sundberg. And he walked him. Lead off walk. That's what he had in mind with a two and lead. Nice ceremony and fans able to. There's Jeff Russell. Yeah, they got some uh, big names coming through here, Texas Rangers. Juan Gonzalez's son accepting in his father's behalf. Gonzalez, 293 lifetime average with 372 home runs. Russell, 134 saves in his career. Jeff Russell, I could just uh, see him pitch and throws across his body, right hander, good tight slider down and away. Finished a lot of games, record holder for finishing games as a Texas Ranger. In August, the Padres will induct their newest members, mm -hmm. two new members, Benito Santiago. Will go into the Hall of Fame along with Gary Templeton. That'll be a special day at Petco. Chirinos batting ninth, hitting 207. That's a good looking bat if it stays fair. He's got a base hit. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, it sloped just enough to go foul. Yeah, you get to the point of no return. James Shields did just that, and that's the chance he takes. Let it go as soon as it goes foul. Touch it, kick it. Got to keep it on the grass. That date for the uh, induction of the two new additions to the Padres Hall of Fame is Saturday, August 8th. Saturday, August 8th. And uh, any of you will want to get your tickets. The Shield struck out swinging the first time. He's on deck, and Chirino wraps that one into the left field corner. A fair ball. Upton comes up with it. His throw will come into third and into second base. Goes Chirinos. Upton would have had a chance at second base. Wasn't close at third, so Chirinos kept right on running. Second and third, no one out. And the Rangers third as they come back or try to from that two run homer by Matt Kim. Well, it looked like a hanging curveball at Chirinos out in front of it. Now the race is on. You can see almost one hands that ball. Upton. Getting it in quickly, and as you mentioned, Dick Chernos sees the ball going to third base, and he doesn't break stride. Okay, hold up a little bit. Now everybody's off. Watch Chernos. He's slow getting the second. The throw goes there. Upton would have had yep. a chance. Top of the order to Shields. That leadoff walk tends to haunt you. Ball one. Shields in San Diego need to stop the bleeding. They've fallen 10 games under 500. Ooh, I love the plan pick off the third. Remember, you can't fake the third anymore. You have to commit, make that throw. As soon as that leg is lifted, Salarte is over there to cover on the throw. Two and oh. Salarte bag high at third and the same Alonso at first. They would have a play at the plate if they should elect to do so. The ball hit up the middle will score a run. Middlebrooks and Jerko playing back. Three and oh. 
Yeah, I think as an infielder, middle infielder, when they're playing back like that, the type of ball that is hit will be a big decision maker. Let's say it's a one hopper. I mean, the screamer right there. Well, there's a chance that he could possibly, but the main thing, Dick, like you said, this early in the game, you want to get outs. You don't want to create a huge inning for the Rangers. And in fact, the ball hit right to Solarte. It's unlikely mm -hmm. that the runner Odor would try to score. And the bases are loaded. A couple of walks from Shields here in the third. Shields loses this Shields. And pitching coach Balsley out to talk with his veteran right hander. Well, it is literally right around the corner, and you can almost see it right in front of us. Tuesday, baseball's best. Gathered Cincinnati for Midsummer Classic. Home field advantage is at stake for the World Series this year. Coverage of the 2015 MLB All Star Game begins July 14th at 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, you examine the two lineups for the All Star Game and all that outstanding pitching and hitting ability. And hard to pick. Now, how do you decide which team is the yep. better team? It is a pick 'em, isn't it? It is, yeah. So the Rangers with the bases full and no one out. And ball one. Shin Su Chu. He took a third strike his first time. Lead off walk to Odor. Sure now it's a double into the left field corner. The Shields walks to load him up. No one gone. Padres two. Rangers one here in the third. Could be two. Jerko to short, back to first. A double play. That's what the doctor ordered. The run scores to tie it, but cleans up the bases a bit. As Chirinos moves to third, and Chu wraps into that 4 6 3 double play, and Middlebrook's there on the relay, does a nice job. Good feed by Jen in the backhand, right chest high. Get it out, get it out. Quick throw to first, and two big outs. And the Rangers, sure, they tie it up, but like I said earlier, get two outs there. Nice play. What a surprise. Lead off walk comes around to score. Prince Fielder, runner at third. Fielder grounded to the second base side. Actually, Solarte was over on that side with the shift on and made the play. First base open. Do you. Want to pitch to field fielder, or would you rather? Uh, I don't think he's going go to go to Belcher. Yeah. Well, got him to chase a slow curveball. Remember last night, Ian Kennedy he threw a lot of pitches out. But you know, if James Shields makes good quality pitches, sure. And uh, Fritz might be a little froggy also with that runner on third base, so he might swing at some poorly placed pitches. A lot of off speed stuff probably. Out of play. Two back to back off speed pitches. A no doubter last night into the second deck of Ian Kennedy. His 14th of the season. 415 feet. Yeah, not too many mistakes are going to get by Prince Fielder. One and two. This is outside. It is quite remarkable fielder when you think about power hitters and he falls into that category to uh, strike out so few times. Look at that, look at those pitches Dick. Away down nothing in the strike zone reminiscent of Ian Kennedy the first at bat last night. Line drive through the left side and they pitch to him and they pay the price. Fielder knocks in the go ahead score. Chirinos checks in. It's three to two, Texas. You know what? I don't think I've ever seen Prince Fielder take a swing like that and the result of that ball off the bat going that way. We usually see Prince Fielder coming out of his shoes. Grip it and ripping it. 
this pitch, it looks like a backdoor slider, and he stays on it, head down, and that's his intent to just spank it that way. Usually he's, you know, lift and separate, and that's shortening up going the other way, almost Tony Gwynn like. <laughs> that's a good right? call, yes. So the Rangers come right back to score two, and here's Beltre. Stayed on that breaking ball nicely. Well, he was pitching him away away, and he figured no. he's probably going to throw it out there again. I'll just go with the pitch. Beltre, Beltre struck out swinging his first at bat. So it all starts with the leadoff walk to the number eight hitter Odor. Chernos double, another walk to DeShields. Double play ball scores one, and Fielder knocks in the other with a sharp single to left. Three runs, three hits, Texas, two runs, two hits for the Padres. Fouled at the plate. So among active players, Beltre, 402 home runs. A Rod with 671, Pool Holse, David Ortiz, and Miguel Cabrera. Those are the muscle guys. 60th pitch coming up from James Shields. So on this hot night at 90 degrees, a lot of work to mm -hmm. to get eight outs. Not Beltre's best swing, and we saw that again last night. Even though he homered, he's got a bad thumb, and at times it looks like it really bothers yep. him and his uh, cut at the ball. And it would seem to be, as you take a look at the breakdown for James Shields, 60 pitches. If I know a guy has a bad thumb, I'm going in and I'm going away. Off the end of the bat, you're going to rattle that thumb a little bit, and inside, I think they're going to be a little reluctant to really fight that pitch off. James trying to stay out of the heart of the plate. Low and inside on that last delivery. And really inside pitch two and three. He's going in there again. So the two run home run by Matt Camp in the top half of the inning, negated by the two run scored now by Texas here in the bottom half of the third. See so what Derek Norris puts down here one and two. Change up. Down and in. But off the plate. Two and two. Well, when you talk about balls in play, when Adrian Beltre. Boy, he uses the whole field, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, good point. At the center of the diamond, Mark Sweeney and uh, Steve Finley talk about that all the time. 13% to the left field, 12% to right field, 25% to center. And on the ground on the left side. But still likes to shoot it towards the right side at second base as well. Another full count. It's been a struggle for Shields here in the fourth. You know, when a hitter, Dick, realizes that, and I remember a college coach just having a discussion with a high school college coach. You know, there are high hits out in right field, that just as many as there are in left field. Correct? You got to use the whole field. The good hitters do just that. And he walked another, the third of the inning from James Shields. That pushes Fielder to second base and brings up Josh Hamilton. And the next pitch in this inning will be James Shields' 30th. The new manager has been bruised and battered by this string of play by the Padres. It's just mind boggling as to why they can't score more runs. Now they get a couple runs early tonight, and James Shields, you hope that he might have his best stuff, you know, not give up much. And he's uh, walked three, two hits in the inning, two runs have scored, and they're still going. Hamilton lifts this one left center, and Upton is calling. And that'll end the inning. Two runs for the Rangers on two hits. They lead two. And it's a 3-2 game.
Padres baseball brought to you by Saquon Casino, only 25 miles from Petco Park. And by Jack in the Box, try the new double check. Only at Jack in the Box. Now that's some kind of pass right there. It's this brisket, uh, huh? Give me the ribs, give me the brisket. Oh. Such great spicy flavor, oh, huh? Love it. Yonder Alonzo leading off the Padre fourth. Well, hopefully the Padre hitters can. Yeah, there's a base hit for Alonzo as he shoots it the opposite direction. I was just going to say, hopefully the Padre hitters can uh, get over these meaty pitches from Colby Lewis. Ooh, I like it tender. And speaking of tender, <laughs> let's get on Chris. Nice segue. I like him. <laughs> Colby Lewis has had quite the timeline of. Uh, well, surgeries in his career, starting 19 years ago, he had Tommy John surgery. Then in 2004, he tore his rotator cuff, had to have surgery on that. 2012, just three years ago, a torn flexor tendon, surgery on that. And then in 2013, hip restoration, where they took off bone spurs. Ball driven deep, but foul. Go ahead, Chris. It's the closest thing that you would have to a complete hip replacement. And he mm. says he's the best he's ever felt, but... Quite the bionic man after all the surgeries that have put him back together. Red not giving up the dream. He has a career record of 62 and 62. Derek Norris, one strike on Derek and 0 and 2. And you know what, Chris and Dick, when a pitcher goes through that, you know, you come up, you're young, you've got the good arm, you're, you're successful. Until you get hurt and have to bounce back, you don't know how hard it is to work. Because it just comes all natural to you when you're a young kid. You, know, you just get the ball, you have some fun, you strike people out. Okay. You get hurt. Oh, it's a different path, different road. You got to work really hard to get back. Makes you appreciate the game a little bit more as well. Norris pops it up. Medium deep right center. And the Shields tucks it away. One away. Norris has had a tough road trip. He's six for 34. One out to Jed Jerko. Struck out swinging the first time. Tying run at first with one away. I feel kind of shallow. The shield is playing a shallow center field on the shortstop side of second base. And if Jed can drive something that way, possibly. Once again, remember left side of the infield heads up with Lewis. He will throw that two seamer in. So you're going to get ground ball here or there on that little two seamer that he throws. Like that one. Taken by Jerko. Boy, that was a good pitch. One away, Alonzo will lead off single at first base. On the count to two and one on Jet Jerko. Eighty nine to seventy five on the speed range. Now eighty nine topping out on the fastball. Interesting. And three balls and a strike. Well after the all star game play resumes at Petco a nice homestand for the Padres. Next weekend three with Colorado then three with San Francisco and four with the Marlins. Fly ball behind second. Odor, the second baseman. Another pop fly induced by Colby Lewis. And tonight's telecast brought to you in HD by Sony 4K. Will Venable struck out the first at bat. A 
right down the middle again at 85. Yeah, a little off the middle, but right there. Mm -hmm. The bouncer to first baseman Moreland. He'll go over to second base for the force. He was headed that direction anyway. And the Padres are gone in the fourth. We got inducted into the Padres Hall of Fame. Back with the answer in Arlington. Flashback to Benito Santiago, named to the Padres Hall of Fame. He'll be joining Gary Templeton in the ceremony in August. Three gold gloves, four silver slugger awards for Benito. Boy, he didn't need to stand up to throw a run around, did he? Uh, you heard that baseball just whiz by your ear on its way to second base. And there are the numbers. Beniago, Benito Santiago, and jump steady Gary Templeton. Well deserved. I fly ball Mitch Moreland left fielder up to eases his way toward the line one pitch one out and boy does James Shields need that he used a lot of fuel in that last inning 30 pitches. Hey look at the bullpen coach for the Texas Rangers Andy Hawkins in that first clip we showed of Benito throwing out the runner Andy Hawkins was on the mound for San Diego. And which is also nice you could tie it in even. Uh, and more in that throw down to second base was the Hall of Famer Roberto Alomar. Hey, pretty good up the middle, don't you think, Dick Templeton? Alomar. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, this Andrus struck out his first time. Just like last night, it's a late arriving crowd here mm -hmm. at uh, Global Life Park in Arlington. About half of the crowd that we now see here at the opening pitch it just keeps filling in. Last night, final attendance was 33,000. Here we have at least that again tonight. It's a big ballpark, 48,000 plus. Hard to believe, 21st year. I know. It's nice. It's not Petco, but it's really nice. Uh, yeah, it's got a good feel to it. Oh, nothing beats Petco. Come on now. Shoot rock fire. Abba, Abba. Ham and eggs. Pop the top. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Shields. He gets Andrews for the second time. Two away, you know, fourth inning. Oh, uh, Gary Templeton, the switch any shortstop. Nice, easy swing. Just flick that ball, bat. This is during the 84 World Series. Ozzy Virgil telling Kurt Bavacqua to eat some dirt.
very nice. Rugnad Odor. He walked to lead off the last inning, came around to score. And Shields lost his radar the last inning, struck out no one and walked three. Yeah, 31 pitch inning. High fly ball, left center hit fairly well. Upton going back and gives round to Justin Upton. Can't go wrong there. One of the Uptons going to catch it. Well, why was the 1989 All Star game, the 89 All Star game, so memorable? We're going to find out. by Coors Banquet. We go to the 89 All-Star Game and Bo Jackson bombs this home run at Anaheim Stadium way up there. A monster shot off Rick Russell. And he goes on to win the MVP as the American League took the game 5-3. to three. The two sports star, Bo Jackson. Dick, I know you've seen a lot more sports than I have in my day, but I'll tell you what, I think it's fair to say, for me personally, the greatest athlete ever, Bo Jackson. What do you think? Yeah, well, in your generation, yes. yeah, you've got an argument. And consider that he was an All-Pro running back, and uh, was able to play this game at that high level. Whoa, oh, he was strong. Mm. So fun to watch. So I remember that was in the first inning, wasn't it? Did mm -hmm. he hit that in the first inning? Second pitch, yeah. Will Middlebrooks, second pitch, he fouls it back. Middlebrooks. Fly to center field his first time. You know, I remember watching that game on TV because I was with the Padres. It was during the break, and as soon as that ball was struck, you know, center field, kid, it looked like it was a pop up. And then the the high home camera picks it up, and it just keeps going and going. Middlebrooks to shortstop, Andrews throws him out, one away. And, and if you look at Anaheim on the center field fence, it said 406 or 404. So, and that ball went at least another 60 or 70 feet. No, that ball hit here in this stadium. Probably doesn't even land in the grass, lands in that little overhang above the grass in center mm -hmm. field. Oh. There are home runs and then there are yes. home runs. Melvin Upton swing and a miss. He's grounded out and struck out. There's that part you're talking about, Dick, and Bo Jackson's probably would have been right here. The head of the bat, two strikes on Upton. There's the 404 right there, Dick. And then behind the fence, and then there were some bleachers covered by that screen. And, uh, <laughs> not as long as Reggie's in Detroit, but that is in the conversation. One ball, two strikes. Padres here in the fifth inning. One out, bases empty, trailing 3 2. Jan Salarte on deck. 
Lays off the breaking ball away. Two and two. Got him. Another strike now for Lewis. His fourth. Twice Melvin Upton. You old enough to remember Dr. Zhivago, the movie? Oh, Omar Sharif. Yeah, he passed yeah. away. You Julie know. Christie, how you doing? Yeah, hope you have. Yeah, I know. He passed away, huh? 83 years of age. On top of being a tremendous actor in tens of movies, he was a, a bridge master as well. One of the outstanding bridge players. Mm. Salarte. He doubled left center in the first. Hit by a pitch in the third and scored on Kemp's home run. Do you ever play bridge? Yeah. Seriously? Not smart enough. Yeah, I, I got into it when I was in graduate school and I realized the game wasn't for me. The night I threw all the cards at everyone else. They thought that was, <laughs> wasn't a good idea. 52 card pickup. <laughs> yeah, I was I good at yeah. that game. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't take defeat real well, and you, know, you can kind of chase away the guests in a hurry when you mm -hmm. do things like that. Cleans up your life. That's foul back toward us. Hey, we've got a game break coming up. Arizona Diamondbacks, New York Mets from the Big Apple, Monsana Grande. Mike Pomerantz and Steve Finley will fill you in on that. I wonder how the D backs are doing. They're 42 and 43. They're only a game behind San Francisco in the West. They've moved four and a half games in front of. Uh, the Padres. Got a lot of that one, but way out in front. Sails that into the second deck down the right field line. Two and two with two outs here in the fifth. Boy, Colby Lewis not lighting up the radar gun by any stretch. Here comes a fastball in. Almost hit him again. Full count to Solarte. You know when they say a pitcher throws gas and throws cheddar. Mm -hmm. and it's like high 90s. That's cheddar. That's cheese. For Lewis, it's Colby Jack. Oh, that's good. Nice time. Yeah. It's, you know, high 80s. Not really sharp. Total move. Huh? So a two out walk. That was a big play in the third inning. Hit by a pitch. Set it up for Kemp's home run. And here comes Matt again. Kemp with. Solarte aboard in the third got into this one 384 feet later the Padres had a lead two to one. It was a three two breaking ball a little slider. That Matt Kemp crushed. Solarte's walk is the first allowed by Lewis tonight. Ball one. And there's a second at bat. Look at pitch number six. That's in the nitro zone. And, and the pitches prior to that were, you know, he's trying to work the corners up and in, down and away. Well, number six, he was all over it. Right on the barrel of the bat. Mm -hmm. Looking for another home run, one and one. So eight home runs on the season now for Kemp. Oh, the pick box. I didn't miss by much. Two and one. Colby Lewis, 35 year old veteran from Bakersfield, California. This will be his 70th pitch. And he falls behind three and one. Okay, does Colby Lewis try to pitch backwards here, meaning fastball count? Will he try to throw a wrinkle in one? Will he try to locate a fastball? Hey, a majority of the time, a lot of pitchers 3 1 like to go down and away. That's their safety zone. See if he tries to maybe bury a two seamer in because he will do just that. Shift on. 
right side is totally open for Kemp. And another walk back to back. The first two given up by Lewis in the game. And here's Justin Upton. What does he do? He's three for 25 on the road trip. Well, this is what Justin Upton was brought to do as a Padre. That one swing for a three run shot, maybe an extra base hit. Crack of the bat, everyone's going to be going. Third time around for the Padre left fielder. Tying run at second. Go ahead, score Kemp at first. If I'm Lewis, I'm trying to keep everything away here. Round ball into left field for a base hit. Solarte hustling around third. Here comes Hamilton throw to the plate. Offline and the Padres tie it up to three as Upton delivers. Boy, Solarte has played a big factor in this game. He scored two of the runs and doubled and was at third base begging to score in the first. And with the lack of offense, the way the offense has been going for San Diego, Glenn Hoffman cracking the bat. He is sending. Jan Harris Salarte, he's going to put the pressure on Josh Hamilton. He's got to make that perfect throw. The windmill sending him around. The ball is up the line. Nice key hit by Justin Upton. So another two out run scored by the Padres. They got their first two runs on a two out homer by Kemp. And with two out, a couple of walks set the table for Upton's RBI single. And here's Yonder Alonso. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, out to chat with Colby Lewis. Yonder popped a short and singled the left. Lewis is about to go to work and then uh, had a second thought backs off the rubber. Now he's ready. The inside. That right field porch inviting with the left handed hitting Alonzo. Just two home runs, however, on the season. Low. Uh, Kemp daring catcher Toronto's to throw to second base. Remember that happened last night. Threw behind Kemp, went to third, ball went in the dugout. You know, I think just it, it was a split instant. If that ball was thrown down by Torinos down to second base, I think Kemp may have committed to third base, but there was nobody there. And Alonso takes the 25th pitch of this inning from Colby Lewis, and it's 3 and 0. So it started all in Colby Lewis's pocket a ground out Middlebrooks, a strikeout by Melvin Upton, but then he walked Solarde, walked Kemp, gave up the single to Upton, and now 3 and 0 to Alonso. And ball oh, just on the top of the strike zone. And a late call by Paul Schreiber, the umpire, 3 and 1. Runners ready to roll with two away. And a ground ball to second. That's routine. A door over the first for the out. And that'll do it for the Padres top of the fifth, but they tie it up on a couple of walks and up to single to left field. We're even at three.
All right, thank you, Mike. Padres have tied it at three. We go to the last of the fifth. Ninth hitter, Robinson Chirinos. He doubled back in the third inning. That was a key blow in the two run third. The inning started when Odor walked, then Chirinos doubled, second and third. Then the Shields walked, and with no one out, the bases were loaded. One run scored on Shin Su Chu's double play ball, and then Fielder knocked in the other run with a line single to left field. More Padre faithful here in Texas rooting on the Padres. Gotta love it. One and two to Chirinos, then the top of the order to Shields and Chu. Two and two. Shields, three walks, all in that third inning. And five strikeouts. Giving him 131 punch outs for the season. Started third highest National League. You know, when you pitch in this weather, this humidity, 80, 90 pitches, it feels like 120 pitches because you're just not used to it. High humidity tonight. You got to really. If you, if you feel you're losing a little bit of strength out there, you got to start maybe backing off a little bit as far as rather than trying to blow a ball by somebody. Think off speed. That's where the changeup comes into play. Legs might have a tendency to get a little heavy. Start thinking with the head a little bit more. Chirinos acquired a couple of years ago from Tampa Bay. For cash considerations. Way out in front. That's going to go into the upper deck about 50 feet from the foul pole. <laughs> Might have made it into that little mezzanine area. Way out in front of that one. But it finds yeah. a, a loving you pair bet. of hands. Don't throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> Another foul. Ground ball into left field. Another hit for the number nine hitter. A double and a single for Chirinos. That was a good at bat. He battled, knocked away a lot of good pitches. Foul. Chirinos and Cholula. That has a ring to it. Cholula flames over tonight. And 92 for James Shields. We talked about our pregame show. It's all about the location. So the 92, he's got to get down. Sure, that was a hard hit ground ball, but it just happened to find a hole on the left side. Brings up leadoff hitter Delano De Shields. He struck out and walked. Solarte moves in on the infield grass, respecting De Shields' ability to beat out bunts. And he squares and takes ball one. So this long arduous road trip ends tomorrow here in Texas 1130 our TV time back to San Diego on Fox Sports San Diego. Tyson Ross will shoot for a sixth win of the year against Giovanni Gallardo. He's seven and seven. Now in the American League and with the designated hitter takes a good bat out of the lineup. Gallardo can hit. That's a strike one and one. Well, the ideal situation right here for Shields is the one down the first baseline with Solarte charging at third. You want to bunt it this way because Alonzo's holding on that runner. And he's going to creep in here to try to get that runner at second, possibly on a force. It's interesting that the Houston Astros who drafted the Shields the eighth overall pick in the first round five years ago as a 17 year old would allow him to be on that uh, rule five draft list and Texas gobbled him up in a hurry. Runner goes and a push bunt. 
the Shields with the underhand toss for the out. One away and uh, they'll score that as a sacrifice hit. Although he was looking to beat out a base hit as well. Scooting down the line quite nicely. And the Shields does lead the Texas Rangers in stolen bases with 14. Got down really quickly. Chirinos moves to second. And here's Shin Su Chu. He is struck out and grounded into a double play. He's 0 for 3 last night. Jerko a couple of steps on the outfield grass. Strike one. 3 3 tie as the Rangers threaten here with one out. Chirinos out there at second base. Look who's on deck. The Prince. Waved that and missed. Well, oh, I just, you know, there's been a few pitches this evening with Chu up there that. James Shields has gone away off the plate and he has offered that. So he's got that in the back of his mind. As Kevin Quackenbush is warming up in the Padre bullpen. You know, when a pitcher starts to tire in such conditions as here in Texas, sometimes that arm can drop a little bit. You work around the baseball. That's what Pat Murphy, Darren Ballsy, the pitching coach, Keep a close eye on. Is he throwing strikes with the pitches he usually strikes throw strikes mm -hmm. with at this point in the game? Or is he up in the zone? 90 pitches so far for James. And another full count. This is one of the uh, little nuggets I gave on James Shields for the scouting report to avoid the deep counts. All three walks given up in the third inning when Rangers scored two to take a 3 2 lead. The Padres have tied it here on the top of the fifth on a couple of walks and just an Upton single. This is the fourth full count for James. Make a big pitch here. Long stare down. Now he's ready. I think he's going with the change up. Not even close. Walk number four, and that sets it up for Prince Fielder. And we bring you our Ram Bucks Twins of the Three. We're going to go back to the third inning. Remember, Prince Fielder was up at the plate. A guy who likes to lift and separate, but this backdoor breaking ball, he stays on it nicely, shortens up the swing, and he notices that the shift is playing him to pull. Will Middlebrooks playing shortstop. He was the lone fielder and he beats the shift, drives in a run. And that's the complete hitter right there in Prince Fielder. Herniated disc in his neck, sidelined him last season for most of the year. Back healthy and a lethal bat. Last year was his first year here in Texas after the big contract as a free agent. Big seasons with the Tigers before, son of Cecil. Ball one. Judging by the way that fielder took that last breaking ball, the first pitch, tells you that he's just eliminating that as you take a look at hit us highest runners in scoring position average, 417 and tops. Paul Goldschmidt. Look at Cameron. Cameron Maven on that yeah. list. 412. 2 and 0. Pressure mounting on James Shields. 
Ninety four pitches. He's got two on one out. And a three forty five hitter at the plate. He seems to have no weakness. Three and oh. Adrian Beltre, the cleanup hitter next. He's swinging if this is a good pitch. Decides not to take a cut, three and one. Enfield looking for a double play chance. Three and one. Uh oh. Hit deep to right, but not deep enough. And the catch made by Venable, tagging and moving to third, he is Chirinos. Boy, off the bat, that looked like that could be a three run dinner, but he got out on the head of the bat a little too far. Yeah, just a little bit too quick to that pitch there, Dick. Out in front. And I love the phantom cam really slows it down how far out in front did he get it. Yep. It's a matter of maybe two inches down the bat toward the yep. sweet spot and it's a three run home run. Well, it is a delicate balance isn't it. it sure is. Here's Beltre runners at first and third he struck out oh. and walked. Like one. Interesting that Middlebrook's getting a rare start at shortstop has not really been tested other than turning a double play, a four six three double play earlier. They've been quiet over there. Usually the ball finds you. That ball in the dirt and nice block by Norris. And here comes the 100th pitch of the evening for James Shields. Well, the ball in the dirt, a little help from the runners. Hey, hold, don't go. Suave. Center field, here comes Upton in a hurry to make the catch. So Shields able to pitch out of trouble in the fifth. It's still tied at three. and parents joining me now you guys about three hours away this kind of worked out perfectly for you guys uh, the off day these games and then I know that you guys will get to spend some time with them at the all-star break you don't get to see your baby boy very much mom what's it like to be able to spend this time with 
It's wonderful. I always say if I have the chance to breathe the same air for a little while, we're good. So it's it's wonderful because we don't get a lot of time together. Dad, you were coached him when he was growing up and maybe football too. What was that like at, to A, see him become the player that he is? And, and did you think that he'd get to this spot? Well, we, we were hoping and it was, uh, you know, I've Working with a lot of coaches, they, they said he was a special kid, and, and just to see where he is and, and how he's done uh, makes you, makes you, as, you know, proud as a father as, as well as a coach. Lacey, I want to ask you, college softball player, now college coach, what's the conversations like when you're on Will? Do you give him any advice? Um, I try to keep it pretty simple. If he wants to talk about sports or the game, that's fine. Otherwise, we get into mechanics and basics, and I think sometimes it gets pretty annoying. But it's it's nice, I think, to be able to have that conversation back to back. I appreciate the time. You've uh, raised a very great son, and we're happy to have him part of the Padres. Thank you, guys. Dick, back to you. All right, grew up in Texarkana. Will was an all-state punter mm. on his football team. Once again, one of those guys that was always picked first could probably do it all. Derek Norris leading off the six for the Padres, tied at three. And the count goes to two and one with Jerko Venable to follow. Padres need a victory. Get these this turned around tonight. Two and two. Two and eight in the last ten games. They've fallen 11 away from the Dodgers. They're only one game ahead of Colorado for the bottom spot. Fly ball, right field, easing in his chew for the first down. Three outfield putouts off the bat of Norris. Well, we've got a game break coming up. Braves, Rockies from the Mile High City. Mike Pomerantz and Steve Finley will break it down for you. Jet Jerko has struck out and popped up. Mike Pomerantz is going to be so happy to have us back in San Diego, oh, isn't he? Did I miss him dearly. Did you get the flowers that he sent I us? I did. Oh, what a guy. Yeah, he's always thinking. Of us, team guy. I'd want him on my team. No question. I mean, he's the host of so many shows here on Fox Sports San Diego. I hope he's getting a bonus, huh? I <laughs> hope they're giving him <laughs> line drive nice. off the middle base hit. Jerko reaching out and punching that one up the middle. Hot race fifth hit. Well, talking to some of the coaches last night after the game, they said Jed has made. Great strides after coming back from El Paso in this swing and stayed back just enough on this breaky ball. That's a slider down and away, and he goes out and gets it. And the Phantom can stay on it. And the result, nice. Roll those wrists. Venable is struck out and grounded out. Runner goes, hit right up to the second baseman. Took him right to the bag, throw to first. In time, a 4 6 3 double play. Well, they tried to hit and run, and the second baseman covering the ball hit right to him.
All right, thank you, Mike. Josh Hamilton leading off the last of the sixth inning of this 3 3 tie. Marcus Mateo getting loose in the bullpen. Ground ball into the shift. Alonzo takes it away from Jerko and gets it to first base just in time. Shields covering on the 3 1 put up. So Hamilton over 3 tonight. Here's Mitch Moorhead. Home run to center field and a fly ball to left. Nice play by Yonder Alonzo. Hit so sharply that the feed leading Gene Shields. You know, it's not just one certain part of the play. It's diving, it's stopping it, it's feeding your pitcher covering. Nicely done all the way around. And James Shields, as soon as that ball was hit, he was on his horse over. That's another important part of that play. He's proud of his durability, Shields, and he's showing that again tonight in this heat. Into the sixth inning, 102 pitches so far. Moreland's home run to straightaway center field. A solo shot. Second inning. 15th of the year, he leads the team. Mateo getting ready. A ball and a strike. Chasing back, back, and that wall is gone. His second home run. Circles the bases, and when he hits home plate, the Rangers are back in front. Four to three. Number 16 for Moreland. Could tell I was going with your eyes closed. Bang! What a sound. And you know what? He got on top of that one just enough. Look at this how he gets his hands through, level swing, and works under it, but just up but top enough. And that's up. You talk about up around the letters. That's up around the letters. And that's getting on top of it just enough to send it out of the ballpark. Well, the home run ball biting James Shields again tonight. That's number 19 that he's offered. And 16 of 19 home runs given up by Shields have been solo shots this year. Both solos tonight, but the Rangers now have the lead, four to three. Marcus Mateo comes in and this pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford. Well it's been a handful of days a few days since uh, Marcos was out there on the hill. It was Tuesday in Pittsburgh. Inning of two thirds gave a couple of hits a run a walk and a strikeout. Try to stop the bleeding here. Another right hander following James Shields and you know go back to that home run. Out of the hand of James Shields you know traditionally speaking I'm not talking every left hander but generally speaking they like the ball down and in. I'll tell you what Moore got up top of that pitch just enough to send it on its way. 
Pitch was definitely, if not up, out of the zone. I mean, that's if taken a ball. Mm -hmm. And there's Ian Kennedy gave up back to back home runs last night yeah. to Fielder and Beltre. So each offering two home runs, all four solo. Elvis Andrus backs away from Mateo's first pitch. So if Shields goes five and a third, 105 pitches in this high heat, four runs, five hits, four walks, five strikeouts. Andrus fouls it away. I would bet on a night like this that Shields lost five pounds. Absolutely. Water weight, no yeah. question about it. Serious lather. Upton has to hurry in, but he's there for the catch, and Andrus is gone for the second out. You know what I, uh, I like about James Shields? You know, getting to know him a little bit his first year as a Padre, but you see him on the bench. He's talking with Derek Walsley. He's talking with Ian Kennedy. And, you know, he, he lives and dies with each pitch. And you know, he's, he's the type of pitcher that leaves it all out there. He's pedal to the metal. And um, you know, he wants to get insights from other teammates, and he wants to share his feelings and his frustrations. And he's just not one of these guys who doesn't want to get involved and go back in the clubhouse and forget about it. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mateo working now to Rugned Odor, who has walked and scored and flying to left. I guess the one word I'm trying to find is passionate. He's passionate about his his job. There's another side to him. He's a very proud guy, and he feels like his stuff is so good that no one should hit it. You know, exactly. It's almost like yeah. he came to the dugout and talking to balls as if to say, "How can they? How can he hit that pitch for a home run?" As you said, you don't see many left handed hitters go up and hit yeah. one off their chin for a home run. He spent. So in the game, Moreland's first home run in the second inning made it 1 0. Matt Kemp hit a two run homer in the third. Padres took a 2 1 lead. Texas came back to score two, regain the lead 3 2. The Padres tie it with a run in the fifth at three, and now Moreland with a go ahead home run. And Odor, a couple of hops to Alonzo, and that's it for the Padres in the sixth inning. But the home run by Moreland is now 4 3 Texas. Now, what was the 1999 All Star game so memorable? We're going to find out when we come back. By Geico, the 1999 All Star Game, American League starting pitcher Pedro Martinez struck out the first four National League hitters Barry Larkin, Larry Walker, Sam Sosa, and Mark McGuire. He became the first pitcher in history to begin the All Star Game striking out the side. Geico special All Star moment. 
Well, the Padres down by one as we move to the seventh inning. Lead off hitter is Will Middlebrooks. You know, if you want to have a little chuckle, have a little fun, go to baseballreference.com and look at the year in 1999 that Pedro Martinez had. Oh my goodness. One of the greatest years ever. On his way to the Hall of Fame, huh? fly ball shallow in left center, but the Shields can run it down with his speed. And Middlebrooks is 0 for 3. All right, well, we've got him in it this month. Fox Sports San Diego is proud to honor Special Olympics of Southern California as the community partner of the month, presented by Kaiser Permanente. Special Olympics transforms lives through the joy of sports and is the world's largest organization for people with intellectual disabilities, supporting 4.4 million athletes. For more information, visit FoxSportsSanDiego.com. Top of the order, Melvin Upton has grounded out and struck out twice. Padres need a run to tie. Leon Solarte to follow. Solarte has been on base all three times. Melvin last night, a bunt single, a home run to left, and a ground ball single to left. It was a three for three night with a sacrifice. Dyson and Slice in that outside corner with that 82 mile an hour slider. Got him again three straight times. He's punched out Upton. A total of five strikeouts on the game. This is just a. Good old fashioned 89 mile an hour fastball right down the middle. So two outs. And here's Salarte, a double hit by pitch and scored, walked and scored. Spencer Patton and Sam Freeman saw them last night warming up in the Texas pen. Line drive. Foul. Not by much. Five hits for the Padres. Kemp with a two run homer. Upton's single drove in the third run. And five hits for the Rangers. Two of them solo home runs by Mitch Moreland. Two strikes. Lewis wanted that one. They yeah, tried to backdoor the breaking ball on that one. Backdoor curveball. It's exactly where he wanted it. That was by design. Chirinos behind the plate was up out of the crouch. High target. See him point out in front, curveball. He wanted it in the dirt. Get it down. Another foul. Watch out. That one's getting into the lower deck. Nice grab. Nice to see some of the youngsters at the mm -hmm. ballpark. Backdoor curveball. And it's rolled. Hits the bag at first base. Moreland still recovers in time to throw him out. One, two, three inning for Colby Lewis, the seventh. Stretch half here at Globe Lake Park in Arlington. And the Rangers lead 4 3.
first run of the game, the home run to center field off the bat of Mitch Moreland, his 15th of the year. Padres would answer. Matt Kemp, a two-run shot. Kemp's eighth homer of the year, and it was a 2-1 San Diego lead. Not for long. They tied it, and then a lash off the bat of Prince Fielder made it a 3-2 Texas League. Justin Upton tied it with that base hit to left field in the fifth inning, only to find Mitch Moreland up again in that home run stroke. Number 16, and that's where we stand. 4-3 Texas, our Harris game summary. We've got the cows dancing on top of the Ranger dugout. Those are, a, whole, those are whole stains, you know. Yeah. Like a, it's a very moving experience. It's a clever advertising campaign, isn't it? Sure is. The bottom of the seventh. Mateo stays in to work another inning. It'll be Robinson Sheeran has to start. And then the Shields and Shu to follow. Leonis Martin is in the on deck circle, apparently going to hit for the Shields. Chernos hitting night, batting only 207, but Shields couldn't get him out. He doubled and scored and singled. All right, tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag SD Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by our friends at T Mobile. That's hashtag SD Data Strong Fan. Chirinos takes strike one. Moreland with the two home runs. Chirinos with a single double. The only other hit Prince Fielder's RBI single. We out in front. Tanner Shepherds, we saw him last night getting loose in the Ranger pen. Fly ball. Foul territory. Salarte might have room. Oh, just back a couple of rows. And another Padre fan with a souvenir. Well, and why don't we just uh, identify that gentleman as our fan, Diego, fan of the game. Good for him. Good seats. Looks like he brought his son with him. Hey, and there's Steve from the right field mission. From San Diego. He's uh, one of the guys that in right field at Petco Park made the trip to Texas. So welcome Steve. I'm sure his phone's going to be blown up in about 10 seconds. He's sitting right below us and there's that father and son possibly there. Great seats. Good for those guys. Mateo two and two on Chirinos the catcher leading off the seventh. All the left field routine for Upton. And one away. And here is Leonis Martin. Leonis, uh, the regular, but in a bit of a slump of late. So they're giving the line of the Shields a chance to play. The field gives a, a spark to the lineup off the leadoff spot. Martin hitting just 2 2. Seven to twenty seven. Five home runs. And Mateo starts him with a high strike, ninety five miles an hour. They expect a lot more of this young man. Ninety four right inside, tied yep. him up. Yeah, he's got some speed. We saw his arm last night. Remember, he caught that ball deep on the track and threw it on the fly to second base. A perfect strike. He's got a hose.
Yeah, they feel he has the potential to be a five tool player. Doesn't it seem like a month ago that this road trip started <laughs> in St. Louis? I know. It seemed like they get longer and longer. Inside, two and two. It started wonderfully. Two wins in St. Louis against the always tough Cardinals, but nothing since. Cardinals taking the next two, and the Pirates with the sweep of the three tight games in Pittsburgh, and Martin goes down swinging. First strikeout for Mateo. Two gone now in the seventh. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Shin Su Chu struck out, bounced into a double play, and walked. Pretty well, but up in position perfectly. And it's a one, two, three inning for Marcus Mateo. He's retired all five men that he has faced. We go to the eighth. All right, Mike, here we go. Eighth inning. Tanner Shepherds comes in out of the bullpen. We've got one of the fans running around the outfield, the usual craziness, and somehow another fan seemed to be entertained by this sort of thing. We're not going to show it. And they finally corral him, and he, he tastes the turf, as they say. That'll give us a chance to bring you the National University standings in the National League West. The Dodgers starting to move ahead of the pack. Five and a half in front of San Francisco. They both play tonight. Arizona has lost, so they fall seven back. San Diego currently 11. Colorado with a win, 11 and a half. So Padres need a win to stay in front of Colorado. Now they'll send that young fan off to sober up and uh, meet a soulmate. 
that may work in the Padres' favor because Shepherds is ready to go to work. Now he has to stop and pull back and refocus. Padres got to him last night for a couple of runs. He walked to the big blow was Kemp's double. Yeah, this is a big inning for San Diego. As you mentioned, Kemp up and Alonzo do up, and Shepherds can uh, be a little wild at times. 17 walks in 28 two third frames. The strikeout is there with 23. And Leonis Martin, Martin goes into uh, center field. Matt Kemp, the two run homer, a walk, and safe on the fielder's choice. And fouls it away. I'm going to correct myself. Martin, Martin in center field. Leonis Martin. Shepherds grew up just a hour up the freeway from San Diego, Dana Point area. She said last night, uh, pitched at Fresno State and selected as a first round pick by the Rangers in 2009. Yeah, mid 90s on the fastball. He's got a live arm. Slider change up. Yeah. Kemp was on that pitch. Yeah, they're going to have to turn up the dial. After Colby Lewis being around 87 88 Shepherds mid 90s to 97. Lewis goes seven innings, allows three runs, five hits, two walks, hit a batter, and struck out five. A quality start for Texas. Ninety-five and just missed. Camp Upton Alonzo, the three, four, five hitters for the Padres here in the eighth. Down he goes swinging. That'll bring up Justin Upton. He's popped the short, grounded the short, and singled in a run through the hole on the left side. Strike to Upton. Paul Schreiber's done a good job behind the plate tonight. He's been consistent. Give credit where it's due. Hey, I'm all about that. Right? Umpires calling a good game, hustling on the bases. After all, they're people too. I know. I heard that on a, you know, from a San Diego broadcaster, revolutionary. We oh, got the inside breaking ball call on that one there. Two and two. That's one of those pitches that's very rarely called a strike. Maybe the slider, righty on righty, that inside corner. More and more pitchers are starting to do that. Late swing foul. It is interesting. It, when I was a kid, the cry "kill the umpire" was a common thing. Fans yelled it, you know. <laughs> but it's hardly politically correct. But you know, the the love for umpires. Uh, yeah, it's a thankless job. Yeah, it's waned throughout the decades. Round ball off the fist, right to the shortstop, and he boots it. His fifteenth error of the season for Elvis Andrus. Well, let's see if that opens the door for the Padres to come back from this 4 3 deficit. Yeah, make that hurt. Take advantage of that routine. Elvis was set up. Just can't catch it cleanly. Good old fashioned boot. And with that, Jeff Bannister, the manager, comes to the mound and he's going to call on Sam Freeman, a left hander, to pitch to Yonder Alonso. So Shepherds departs. Enter Freeman. It's 4 3.
Football, brought to you by Sony, the leader of 4K Ultra HD. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Top of the eighth inning here in Arlington, Texas. And Sam Freeman, the new hurler, to go left-hander against left-hander with Yonder Alonso, the batter. But as we've documented throughout the season, Alonso hits lefties as well as he does righties. He's one for three tonight. Single to left field. Well, Freeman did not record an out last night. He gave up a single in the seventh inning. That was to Brett Wallace. He was DHing last night. Freeman came over to the Rangers at the end of spring training in a trade with the Cardinals. Player to be named later or cash considerations. Last three years with the Redbirds. Three and two all in relief and the 3 3 3 ERA. He can be a little erratic as well. Alonso takes ball one. 93 on the fastball. Well, time running out. Padres need a big hit. Down by one. Tying run up and safe on an air at first base. So a four out inning for San Diego. 2 and 0. Oh. Outfield swung around towards left. Martin on the shortstop side of second base. And Hamilton over near that left field line. Looks like they're going to pitch him away. No. Outside corner says Schreiber. It's two and one. University of Miami's Yonder Alonso against University of Kansas. Sam Freeman. Yeah, hey, stand corrected. Very nice pitch from Freeman. That last pitch right on the outside corner. Two and one. And he pops him up. Left side. Beltre calling as he comes into foul territory. Two away. And our closed captioning brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Derek Norris has flied out all three at bats tonight. He's not been particular. He's fly to left, fly to center, fly to right. Been a dry time for Derek Norris. Six for the last 35, so he's due to tie into one. Well, we talk about James Shields and battling in this heat, but how about the catcher, Derek oh, Norris? Huh? Good call. Yes. And he has had more than his share of foul tips, the wear and tear of the position catcher. He just doesn't want to come out of the lineup. Well, let's face it, he's got to be looking forward to the all-star break. He's got, you know, probably Austin Hedges will catch tomorrow. I would think. Well, usually that's the case. The, the day game, the backup catcher gets his chance to start at least once a week. And Hedges has looked good on this road trip. Up the middle, but right at the second baseman. Odor with a flip, and the inning comes to an end. Hard hit, but a nine. Bottom of the eighth, we go. Rangers by one.
Score is the same as last night. 4-3. Texas says Benoit pitches the eighth inning. Fielder, Beltre, and Hamilton. Anyone gets on, Mitch Moreland, the hitting star with a couple of home runs. Well, already the 38th game for Joaquin Benoit, a homegrown Ranger back in 1997, the Gulf Coast League Rangers in rookie ball and all the way to 2010. So spent a long time in this Texas Ranger organization and throwing the ball extremely well for the Padres lately. Three tough hitters to face here in the eighth inning trying to hold Texas at four to three and hope that the Padres can come up with something in the ninth inning looking ahead. That's the lower third of the order. Jerko Venable and Middlebrook scheduled in the top of the ninth. So here's Fielder RBI single in three trips. Ball one. One for four. One for three rather last night. A home run and a sacrifice fly. So he's knocked in three of the eight runs scored by Texas in the series. Shift on. It looked as if he wanted to go left field again. There. Yeah. Well, he's smelling as bad after that one. Smell wood burning. Some guys will kiss their bat before they at bat. Yeah, but that wood's burning. They give you yeah. hot lips, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hazards of the trade. Pulled it right to Alonzo for an easy out. One away. Beltre has struck out walk and fly to center. Dodgers are trailing Milwaukee three nothing in the four. Winners, the Diamondbacks losers. Change up ball one. Hey, Derek Norris fans. <laughs> they still call that a Mohawk? I think so. One and one going soft to Beltre here. Change up slider. Well, the road trip and the series wrap up tomorrow. A day game, a two o'clock game in Texas. We'll be on the air at 11:30 in San Diego. Line drive, base hit. Upton trying to cut it off. Beltre turns it first. He's going to try for two. Here's the throw. Not in time. Close play. Jerko slapping the tag on the sliding Beltre. We'll see if uh, Pat Murphy challenges. Jerko looked into the dugout as if to say, eh, I think he's in there. I think you're right, Dick. I think the tag is up on the shin. He's on the bag before the tag yeah. is applied right below the knee. And just a little lower on the tag, and he's got him. Yeah. Apparently no challenge. A one out double for Beltre. Foot on the bag and then the glove is applied to the uh, lower part of the knee. Hey, you know what though? Let's not forget about that nice throw and getting to that ball from Justin Upton. Yeah. That, that's a fine play by the Potter left fielder. His defense has really been outstanding all season long and that sometimes spectacular as we saw in Pittsburgh. Here's Hamilton over three. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball. So Josh is one for seven in the series. And Mitch Moreland hoping to get a chance to swing again. Two home runs tonight. It's his uh, third multi home run game of the season. That change up, it's wicked. You know what? I 
I think Joaquin Benoit falls into one of the categories of he's so solid and you know what you're going to get every time he goes out there. Sure he's going to give up a home run every now and then very few times but he's pretty solid and I think we get kind of spoiled. I mean, yeah. look, you, look, you look at his numbers this year and his splits hits the innings pitch. Now he's the ideal eighth inning specialist. <laughs> A little <laughs> Texas hot shoe there. There's <laughs> bluffing a throw through. Shortstop Middlebrook's playing almost behind second base. And Jerko out in right field. It's a one run game. That was trying to hold that runner close to second. In case of a base hit. Another change up. It's a dandy. I wonder if Ben was talk to Trevor Hoffman about the change. Oh, I'm sure they've, uh, you know, I can't say most definitely, but I'm sure they've crossed paths and talked about it a little bit. Spring training when yeah. Trevor was down in Peoria. High fly ball, shallow and left. Upton coming in for the second out. I've talked to Joaquin about his changeup. He learned it from Al Nipper. Al Nipper was a left-handed pitcher back in the day. He lived at the Boston Red Sox. But he was a minor league coach, pitching coach for Joaquin, and that's where he learned the grip of his changeup. So here's Mitch Moreland with the two solo home runs tonight, the difference in the game. Against the Padres this year, Adrian Gonzalez back in the very opening series of the season hit three at Dodger Stadium. Montero, Dickerson, Blackman, Colorado, Arenado, Colorado, Zanino, Seattle, Coglin of the Cubs. There's a walk more than intentionally. That's the play. Fans wanted to see him swing again, of course. And Joaquin just kind of lobs that baseball up there for the four wide ones. I've always liked it when a pitcher is firm, uses the same delivery, same arm slot. You don't have to go full bore, but at least make it firm so you maintain that delivery and that arm slot. Not Joaquin, he's been doing it for years. Nothing wrong with that. Just the way he does it. Ball four. So Moreland put on intentionally. They'd rather pitch to Elvis Andrews, who has struck out twice and fly to center. Beltre at second, Moreland at first, two outs here in the eighth. Andrews got away with a booted ball in the top half of the inning. The Padres couldn't take advantage. Two for four against Benoit. For the Rangers, John Tallison, 13 save last night. And you see the three Padres do Jerko, Venable, Middlebrooks in the top of the ninth. in his six years prior to this one as a Texas Ranger a major league batting average of 272. So he's down considerably this year at uh, around 235 as he bats here.
Two balls and a strike. Infielders got to get dirty. Ground ball to right or left. To prevent that ball from going to the outfield. Prevent that run from scoring. Rounding third and outfielders got to come up throwing. Good thing here for the Padres also to go the short way for a force out to get out of this. Two time All Star Andrews can't find that one. It was out of the strike zone. Two and two. And I think Joaquin Benoit knows that with that extra run out there, that insurance run, he might be a little froggy. Got a little over anxious swing on that high fastball. Twentieth pitch for Benoit. Line down the left field line. It's hooking and it is a fair ball. That'll score one and holding it third as Moreland hits. Five to three. Oh, it's a big insurance run for the Rangers. Planted that just inside the foul line in the left field corner for his 29th RBI. Elvis Andrus. Now it was a change up down and in, but he just didn't get it down. He didn't get in enough. Dropping the head of the bat. Boy, if that's if that ball is taken, that's off the plate. So credit Elvis Andrus for getting his hands through and keeping that ball fair. A big bonus run for the home side. He choked up on the bat. See how much he's up on the handle. Yep. Rugnet Odor. Strike one. He has walked and scored. Fly out, grounded out. Only seven hits for the Rangers, but three of them doubles and two of them home runs. Kevin Quackenbush, in case, is ready. Well, well last two pitches, Benoit's really reached back and humped up that fastball at 95, blown the ball by Odor. Hit well to left field. Upton has it tracked. And the inning comes to an end, but not until the Rangers add one on doubles by Bill Trey and Andrews. 5-3. Two to tie after the Rangers pick up that bonus run, bottom of the eighth inning. Sean Tollison comes out of the bullpen to try to close it out for Texas. Jerko Venable and Middlebrooks will try to muster a rally for the Padres. 13 saves and 13 chances for Tollison. That was a save last night. Yeah, we saw his work last night. Strikeout pitcher, very few walks. 
He challenges hitters, and the proof is in the splits. Lefty's hitting a little better at 266. These Padre fans hanging around. They want to see him score. They want to see him take the lead. Gave up a walk and an infield hit last night. But struck out a couple in the ninth inning for the save. Padres need a base runner. Jerko singled this last time. He's one for three. Hits that one well to center field. On his horse is Martin and makes the catch. Couple of steps on the warning path. A long out off the bat of Jerko. Well, he got a fastball. Fastball slider changer from Tollison. Will Venable has struck out, grounded out, grounded into a double play. And to take a look at the Phantom Cam. Let's see where this one is squared up on the barrel of that bat. Just below the sweet spot a little bit. Good extension right there by Jed. Nice. Oh, nice play by Venable and he beats it out. Odor did a terrific job of charging that and getting it over to first by Venable. Safely aboard on that base hit. A good idea by Will Venable dragging that one with him and then the race is on. Once he got it by the pitcher he had a chance for a hit. This is close but he's definitely safe. And you know what? Tolleson did a nice job with the glove flip. Well, it was Tolleson that. Made the play in front of Odor. So that brings a tying run to the plate here in the ninth. Yeah, he's safe. So with a tying run at the plate, one out here in the ninth inning. Pitching coach Mike Maddox out to talk with Tolleson. Brett Wallace introduced as the pinch hitter for Will Middlebrooks. And then the top of the order, Melvin Upton. Well, they got to see Wallace last night in three, four at bats, four at bats, a single and two strikeouts. So just a little refresher course from Mike Maddox. One for four and a long out to center field for Wallace last night. A rare start for him as the DH. Outfield deep at all positions. Hamilton and left, Martin and center, two and right. Strike one. Well, first pitch combio from Tollison. He knows that Wallace wants to turn on the fastball, so he pulls the string with the changeup. Fastball in. Eight home, eight home runs at El Paso before being called up to the big club. Venable knows his run doesn't mean anything. He just mm -hmm. has got to stay out there. Can't take any chances. That run in the bottom of the eighth inning for Texas changed the whole character of this ninth inning for the Padres. Another changeup. Right? One and two to Wallace. Looks like a fastball. Change up grip takes a lot off. Great arm swing by Tolleson. Native Texan, native Dallas, Tolleson. College at Baylor. Just in case, Brandon Maurer. This warm weather doesn't take much to keep him loose, but he's ready. Should the Padres tie it up or go ahead here in the ninth?
surprising that Tolleson is paying so much attention yeah. to Venable. Maybe that'll be enough of a distraction that he'll make a mistake to Wallace. Well, if Wallace is going to get a fastball here, it's going to be up and out of the zone. Nothing where he can get the barrel of the bat on it. He gets an off speed again. And he reaches out and punches one over the second baseman. Odor's head. Venable races to third. Wallace delivers a base hit. Said the tying run on. A go ahead score coming to the plate here in the ninth. A little punch single for Wallace gets the job done. And it was a changeup. Wallace has to protect. And he just reaches out and one hands his ball over the Odor's head. Padre's got some action going. First and third with one out in the night. Trying that one out in front and off the end of the bat. Look at that bat wiggle. Had him way out in front. And the pinch runner, Kastner, will come in for Wallace. Andrew Kestner, the pitcher, carrying the tying run. Melvin Upton make amends here. He struck out the last three times. Home run last night. Ball one. After Upton, Solarte. Every single game of this entire road trip has been tight. And Padres have had chances. Just need that one big hit. Yeah. 2 and 0. Oh. Six losses in a row, three of them by one run, a couple by two runs. Well, he's got a fastball here. Two and one. Venable at third. Kastner with one out. The tying run at first base. And two and one coming up to Melvin Upton. And he drills one to left field for a base hit. Venable scores easily. Kastner is going to gamble going to third. Oh. And he is out. Oh, my. Josh Hamilton with a strike to third. Murphy may want to challenge this. Look at this strike to third. Well, he slides right through the bag. I mean, why not? It would be worth it. Pat Murphy got to have a chat with Manny Gonzalez. So it's five to four. The run Venable scores. RBI single for Upton, but is this a base running error by Andrew Kastner? And meanwhile, Upton is still at first base. You know, there's been one little play every single game of this losing streak. Well, Josh Hamilton got to that ball quickly. The ball, first of all, the ball was hit hard, the ball was scalded. He got to it and then the one hop throw to Beltre. Such an awkward slide by Kastner. He didn't go right into the base. He just, his whole body just keeps sliding over it. And it looks as if they, the tag was made before he made contact with the bag. Well, look at Andrew's right left there. foot. He, yeah. he just touches the top of the bag. And then the, before he does that, still hasn't touched it. Still hasn't touched it. And then Beltre gets him up on the belt area, maybe the, the stomach area. Not lack of effort, too much effort by Kashner. And he runs so well, mm -hmm. he figured he could beat it, but the ball got to Hamilton, as you said, it was a rope to left. So the ball was there by the time Kashner was at second. 
And then Hamilton with a big league one hop throw right on the bag and Kastner is out. So the Padres down to their final out. They have the tying run at first and it's up to Solarte. And that's a case of everyone in the string of losses trying to do all they can and maybe too much. Sometimes that leads to trouble too. Sure, you know, and Andrew out there, he he's got speed. The play's right in front of him, and he'd probably score on a base hit with that speed from second base. So Salarte has been on base three times tonight. Takes strike one. Double in the first. Hit by a pitch and scored in the third. He scored on Kemp's two run homer. Walked in the fifth inning and scored on Upton single. In the dirt. Three singles here in the ninth, but only one run for Pat Murphy's Padres. Last season. They were tough in one run games this year, especially this road trip. Eaten into the record 10 and 15. Making these defeats all the more difficult to swallow. One and one. High fly ball to right field. That's hit pretty well down in the corner. And it is gone. Salarte will touch them all. Oh my. What a clutch swing by Jan Salarte, and the Padres do grab the lead after all. It is six to five. Number five for Jan Salarte. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. He delivers the big blow. What the Padres have desperately needed. Oh, you talk about clutch. Oh my goodness, after the tying run is thrown out at third, Solarte comes through with a two run shot off the closer for the Texas Rangers, and just like that, the Pottery's up by one. Here's Matt Kemp. The two run homer in the third got the Padres scoring started, and now a two run home run in the ninth inning Craig for Solarte. And yes, here's Kimbrell. Get hot. Shouldn't take long. <laughs> So three singles and a two run homer for the Padres to rack up a three run ninth. And Kemp drives that ball by Beltre for a sharp single to left. His second hit tonight. So four singles and a home run here in the ninth. Justin Upton, an RBI single in four trips. Straight fastball right down the heart of the plate. Nice easy swing by Matt Kemp. Turning it around. So after Jerko fly deep to center field all the way to the warning path. Venable with that critical bunt single to start it. Wallace punched a soft single to right. Melvin Upton lined a single to left to bring in a run. But pinch runner Kastner was thrown out of third base. So with two outs it looked. Dim for the Padres until Salarte crushed one into the right field corner for a two run homer. Kemp is singled, so manager Jeff Bannister is to the mound and will take the ball, and Spencer Patton will come in from the bullpen. So Collison, who's 13 for 13 and saves, gives up three in the ninth tonight. 350.
dugout and he's picked up Andrew Kastner. That's uh, one of the great expressions of this game. I'll pick him up for you. Kastner had to feel sick about being thrown out at third. It looked dismal for a moment, but then Solarte brightens the night for the Padres with that two run shot to right field. Spencer Patton then with two outs. Kemp with a single at first base and up in the batter. Ball one. So with his closer giving up the save, blowing the save, Jeff Bannister doesn't want the pitch count to get up there anymore. Takes out his closer. Hey, add on a couple more if possible off this guy. That's what Upton's thinking with that swing. Pat threw the seventh inning last night, gave him a hit and struck out too. Good slider right there. Just his uh, tenth game of the season, pitched nine innings, nine hits, and ten runs. Two home runs. That is clutch, Jan Hervis. Popped him up high into the night. Shallow and right. Chu waiting for it to come down. The inning's over, but the Padres score three runs on five hits here in the ninth. Craig Kimbrell will come in with the Padres leading 6 5, thanks to this swing by Jan Solarte. A two run, two out homer in the ninth. Salarte finding that short porch in right field. A two run home run. And the Padres claim the lead six to five. Now it's up to Craig Kimbrell to close it out. Salarte offering our Bill Howe play of the game. That'll put a little hip hop in your step into that dugout for the Padres. You bet. What a night for Salarte. Double hit by a pitch and will. And scored, walked and scored, grounded out and slammed a two run homer. Well, Kimbrough, 21 out of 22. Last time he was out there was at St. Louis, so it's been a while. Back on the third. And Clint Barmas goes in to play shortstop. So it's been over a week since he's yep. been on the mound. Chirinos, the catcher. A double, a single, and a fly ball to left. And then the top of the order, Leonis Martin and Shin Su Chu. Ooh. 96 bouncer. So you have to go back to June 26 to include three outings by. Kimbrell, no runs, a couple of hits. One walk, one strikeout total for his last three saves. In fact, those are the last three Padre wins. 
One and two to Chirinos. Thirty six thousand two forty eight. We're ready to celebrate a Ranger win. One pitch away but Solarte. Has given San Diego the six five lead now it's up to Kimbrell to slam the door here in the ninth. Ooh. Mm. Man, how do you take that pitch. Yeah, that's a strike. Just caught the edge. Yeah, they got a piece of the black. Late swing, wicked line drive into the crowd. Clint Barmas, by the way, has taken over at shortstop. Middlebrooks hit four in the inning by Brett Wallace. Got him. 97 on the heater. One away, and here's Leonis Martin. Just challenging him in a perfectly located fastball. No matter if you're 87 or 97, you got to make sure you hit that corner, and he does just that. Big first out. Martin came in the game to pinch hit in the seventh and struck out. Took over for Delino of the Shields in center. Like one, 96. Kimbrell with 44 strikeouts in 31 innings so far this year. He got a call on that first pitch, didn't he? Mm hmm. Well placed there, right on the inside corner, 0 and 2. Once again, keeping the ball away from him with the heat. Whew, very tardy on that one. Oh, that wicked curveball in the dirt. But you're ready for the fastball. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Two strikeouts for Kimbrell. Tell you what you're going to do. You're going to bust a move back to the dugout for out number two. Curveball. Don't just stand there. Bust a move. Derek Norris creates a throwing lane. Two three on the put out. Shin Su Chu then. There's Ranger fans hoping that will be the two out Thunder off the bat of Chu as Solardi produced for the Padres. Solardi's fifth home run of the year. She was hit 11. Barrels in the 97 for a strike. Those two men, <laughs> they're hungry for a win. Boy, their patience tested. There's the curveball, strike two. I mean, that's such a nasty break. Because oh, out of the hand, it looks like it's. He throws so darn hard. That's a power curveball out of the hand. It looks like it's going to be over the plate. And then the bottom drops out. Yeah, then, you know, you pass the point of no return, you can't hold up. That just looks like a change up there. Sometimes that breaking ball will back up on him. One and two. A strike away from one of the most dramatic wins of the year for the Padres. He got him strike three and the Padres win it. Jan Salarte with a two run home run in the ninth. Kimbrell closes the door, strikes out the side, and the six game losing streak is washed down the drink in very dramatic fashion. 6 5, the final. Here's Mike Pomerantz.